Nerlet. Mm. The difference is, this isn't like BS, natural, wanky, Nerd Alert wine. This is absolutely delicious Nerd Alert wine, and there is a difference. Because the nerd in this case, he's a more wise nerd, Greg LaFollette. I'm not gonna say, I can't say old, because I'm not young, and well, he's older than me, but still, Greg LaFollette, arguably the smartest guy we've ever encountered in the wine business. Uh, this dude knows everything creepy, weird, like Rain Man type stuff. Like he knows everything. If you want to talk about grapes, you want to talk about grape growing, you want to talk about vineyards, he literally has it all on instant, total recall at the drop of a hat. Truly remarkable. And you know, he's made a great career of that. He's used those abilities at, at Flowers. Um, he started the Hartford Court program, um, you know, made his own label, La Follette and Tandem and all these wonderful, wonderful wines using all the best Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in Sonoma. He's, and as well as the Central Coast, he's basically made wine from almost every great vineyard in California. But there was, uh, there was one weapon in his arsenal that had not been used yet. And that was these great old heritage vineyards uh, in the uh, Sacramento Delta. And I say Sacramento Delta, because I'm not gonna say like Lodi, right? Lodi, there's a lot of schmeh wine in Lodi. Uh, Lodi's very capable of producing a lot of schmeh wine. Now, it's not that the vineyards in Lodi aren't great because some of the greatest old vine material, which we'll get to, is in this area. But what we've encountered over the years as we've been tasting wines from the Sacramento Delta area is that there are little regional shifts and points of interest within the Delta, which produce, I think, more profound wines in other parts. Namely, we're gonna focus on the area around uh, the Mokolumne River area. So just north of like Lodi proper, as we're heading uh, into the Clement Hills, like this area between, which Clement Hills is making some baller wine. We'll get to that at some point later. But if Lodi proper into the Clement Hills, this area in between, this Mokolumne River area, makes very, very interesting wines. And some of the greatest old vineyards in the world are located in this area. Uh, the wine today is produced from two of those beautiful old vineyards. So this is the Marshall Old Vine Proprietary Red Wine 2021 Family Cuvée. This is made by Greg from two very specific sites. Um, which one do we get into first? Well, we'll talk about the, 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 the Zen site first. Uh, the Zen site is the Royal Tea Vineyard. The Royal Tea Vineyard is owned by Jesse's Grove, which for those of you who've been with us a long time, you know, heading back into the late 90s, early 2000s, the best Zinfandel in Lodi was made by Jesse's Grove. It was a wine of the month selection for us. Uh, it was the one Lodi Zin at that time, which didn't taste Lodi-y, like beech nut gum and compost. Sorry, Lodi, I'm not like checking you under the bus. Well, I am kind of, but you know, in the nicest way possible. <laughs> anyway, most of the Lodi Zin has this just horrible kind of beech nut gum composty character, which isn't very attractive at all. The Jesse's Grove wine didn't have that so much. Um, and he, found this out because Greg's like smart like that. So he got a chunk of Zinfandel as well as Old Vine Carignan from the Jesse's Grove Vineyard. We'll go into the exact blend in a second because of the hoot. Now the second vineyard is the Bechtold Vineyard. Now the Bechtold Vineyard, this is a true, both of these are registered heritage sites uh, in California, but the Bechtold Vineyard might have the oldest Senso planted on the planet. This was planted a uh, Civil War area, 18, era, 1862. 1864, and the Sanso here is very, very special indeed. It's caught the eye of, of many of the top ampelographers and winemakers on the planet. Guys like Tegan Pasolacqua from Sandlands and Turley makes wines from this site. It is a indisputably historic site with some of the greatest old vine material anywhere. Now, he took the Jesse's Grove Royal Tea Vineyard and he took Bechtold Vineyard and he created this proprietary red mashup of these two historic pre-1900 sites. How effing cool is this? If you're a wine nerd, you're freaking out right now. I'm freaking out right now. And the thing is, both of these sites, the key here is balance. Neither of these sites has ever made, you know, these, these, these the big monster style wines. Uh, the, the, the symmetry 
and verticality of the grapes from both of these sites has always been remarkable. We've been tracking this for 20 plus years. And these wines, both of these sites have always produced remarkably balanced wines. Beautiful, pretty color here. And the Sanso is a big grape. It gives you more like Pinot Noir type mojo, flavors, aromas. It's not um, a bruiser. Sanso, you know, is a secret weapon red wine grape for making great rosé wines because it's really easy to make rosé wine from a red wine grape that almost has no color and can just take that quick straight press. Big grape, lots of juice. Makes always these beautiful balanced wines. And then the Jesse's Grove stuff, let's, let's talk about the exact blend here. Uh, as Greg notes, it's approximately 57% Carignan, 28% Zin, and 15% Sanso. He says the Carignan vineyard is 10% of the almost extinct white grape varietal Monbadon. Hey, how much Monbadon have you had in your life? None till now. You won't even know it. Um, and the Zin part, the 28% the Zin component is 82% Zin, 8% Carignan, and 10% a mix of ancient table and white grapes, including Mission, Flame Toke, Black Prince, and an as yet unidentified what white muscat varietal. Quite a melange, he says. Quite a melange indeed. This is basically a bunch of stuff, but this is really good old stuff historic old stuff. And Greg knows what to do with it. He has a Pinot Noir winemaking philosophy and that conveys itself to this wine. Tender, supple, um, uh, great amplitude in the mid palate from the old vines, but you don't get um, uh, heavy tannins. You don't get a lot of weight. The wine is not the least bit ponderous. It is just this beautiful, look at the color, like that shimmery color. Example of, of historic, California vineyards handled properly by one of the masters of his craft. And when you add all that up, you know, you think, well, what's it gonna sell for? 25 bucks. I mean, how much horrible California wine is out there at $25? And here you get history from one of the greatest producers on the planet in a great year. And uh, what a treat. So kudos to Greg. Love you, brother. This is uh, once again fabulous wine, and uh, thank you for uh, keeping that torch lit, brother.